Spring is here and our barn owl pair, Finn and Gilfy, are busy preparing for nesting. They got together late last year, spending most of their days in the ash dump. But this nest has caught the eye of other birds. Kestrels, jackdaws and tawny owls are all taking a look while the barn owls are away. So in mid-December they move over to the larger elm stump nest. Gilfy is first to go. Closely followed by Finn, the male. Elm stump is a favourite for the barn owls and Gilfy has raised four broods here in the last three years. Their relationship blossoms and their courtship continues through winter. Watch these tender moments as the pair groom each other. This is known as allopreening. This helps with pair bonding, which is vital if they're going to bring up a brood of chicks together. With the breeding season in full swing, nest boxes are in high demand. Soon the elm nest has some unwanted visitors too. As Finn sits in the entrance, a tawny owl strikes. And as it scrambles at the entrance, I spot a scar on its foot. It's Luna, a female that recently had two failed eggs. And with no chicks to look after, she's got a lot of time to defend her territory. As the barn owls relax in the entrance, Luna swoops by again. Another night as the barn owls enter the nest, the tawny owls in hot pursuit. Nevertheless, the barn owls prepare for nesting. Gilfie looks around for the perfect place to lay. She breaks up pellets to make a soft bed for the eggs. And even begins to dig a nest scrape. The male owl, Finn, even has a go too. Finn is a young male, so this may well be his first breeding season. During the courting process, the male usually shows he can provide for the female and the chicks. But Finn hasn't quite got the hang of this yet. He brings in a mouse, but is reluctant to hand it over. And his mating technique shows his inexperience too. But after a few tries, he seems to have got it. It's been amazing to watch these barn owls so closely, and with the courtship going well, we're expecting an egg any day now. It's the beginning of May, and after months of courtship, Gilfy seems to be ready to lay. For her mate Finn, this is all new. At only two years old, this is his first breeding season. He had a shaky start, but is now becoming a devoted partner. During courtship, he needs to prove he can provide for his future family. And he's doing a great job. Once she's had her food delivery, they're ready to mate again. Mating is a way that the barn owls create a strong pair bond. And this is vital to bring up chicks together successfully. Soon Gilfie reforms an nest scrape and spends long periods of time sitting. All signs she's ready to lay. A few days later, a heavy breathing confirms my suspicions. And she reveals her first egg. 
she starts to incubate straight away. In between now and hatching, she'll rarely move from this position. Finn arrives with food for his mate. He's taking his job very seriously. Gilf is quick to make the most of this food. Laying an egg is hard work. It's lovely to see how devoted Finn is to his mate. But he's still a bit clumsy. This is all new to the young male. Gilfie stands up to reveal her egg, and naturally Finn is curious. Finn checks it over with his beak, and wonders if he should brood it himself. Gilfie steps in and pushes Finn out of the way, incubating his best left to the experts. Barn owls lay eggs every two to three days. And as if on cue, I can see Gilfie breathing heavily again. She lifts up, thinking she's laid a second egg. But it's nowhere to be seen. As she turns, the egg drops out, somewhat unconventionally. Finn returns later and gazes down at this second egg. Gilfie gently nuzzles him away and returns to brooding. Over the next few days, he rarely leaves her side. He's so protective of Gilfie and the eggs. Soon a third is revealed, completing the clutch. Over the next month, Gilfie spends most of her time incubating. Only leaving the eggs for the occasional preen and stretch. and to answer the call of nature. Meanwhile, Finn is a real trooper. He's working hard, bringing in food around the clock and spending his days standing guard over Gilfie and the eggs. But there's unwanted attention around the nest. The barn owls must be vigilant. Nearby, tawny owls are roosting and they're highly territorial. Night after night, the pair endure a barrage of attacks. And to make matters worse, Gilfie knocks Finn from the nest, giving the tawnies another opportunity. But thankfully, they keep the tawny owls at bay and no harm comes to the eggs. Soon, they're ready to hatch. Gilfie stands to reveal a huge crack in the first egg. I can even hear the tiny chick cheeping. Gilfie lends a helping hand, removing part of the eggshell. And Finn watches on in amazement. After 31 days of incubation, the first egg is hatched. Finn stays close to his mate, preening her. 
and is intrigued by the empty eggshell. Barn owl eggs hatch at the same interval they were laid, so three days later a second chick is revealed. And the final chick follows three days after. This barn owl family is now complete. Finn brings in food constantly, but competition between his chicks is fierce. And the youngest is lagging behind. It's a lot smaller than its siblings, and when Gilfie tries to feed it, it just won't take it. Overnight, it crawls away from the warmth of its siblings. And Gilfie doesn't seem to realise. At this age, chicks need constant brooding to keep them warm. And by the time Gilfie notices the lone chick, I sense it could be too late. By morning, the chick has died. Nature can be cruel at times. Thankfully, the two remaining chicks are growing well. Finn and Gilfie now have one less mouth to feed, so these owlets now have a better chance of survival. It's going to be amazing to watch this barn owl family develop, and I can't wait to see how Finn steps up to this new challenge. It's mid-June, and the owlets are just under two weeks old. Nutmeg is only three days older than her brother, Time, but she's already so much bigger. Both chicks are tiny and helpless, but thanks to their attentive parents, they're already making great progress. The female, Gilfie, broods the two chicks to keep them warm. It'll be a while before they can regulate their own body heat. Meanwhile, the male owl, Finn, is on hunting duty. He heads over to the feeding post, and it's stunning to see him in the evening light. The food here is hotly contested, and he narrowly misses a swipe from a kestrel. But he still returns to the nest with a meal for his family. He's an attentive mate for Gilfie, and a great dad for the owlets. And when he's not out hunting, he's always in the nest by the side. At 16 days old, Nutmeg's eyes open. Now able to see her surroundings, she starts to explore, shuffling around on her haunches. And when left to her own devices, she's even trying to feed herself too. Finn brings in regular food deliveries. He's really stepped up to the challenge of being a first-time dad. And he's prepared to defend his brood too. A tawny owl swipes at Finn as he returns from hunting, and this fearless barn owl doesn't hesitate to attack. Finn's swift actions means the family are now safe. Nutmeg's down is developing, and she's even stretching her legs and wings. Time looks so much smaller than his sister, it's amazing to think there's only three days between them. But he seems healthy and he's very vocal. When Finn brings in a mouse, Time is first in line. He's 
got a healthy appetite and swallows it down whole. Now at 24 days old, Time is covered in fluffy white down. His eyes are open now and he's becoming more mobile, waddling around and stretching his surprisingly long legs as he begins to stand. It's so incredible to get an insight into the first month of these chicks' lives. They're developing fast with the parents there for them every step of the way. And with my cameras capturing every moment, I can't wait to watch as they continue to grow. Gilfie and Finn have proved themselves to be expert parents, providing them with food and warmth up till now. Now at 31 days old, Gilfie can't brood nutmeg anymore. She's just too big. But soon she stops brooding time too. But nutmeg's there to ensure a little brother keeps warm. Both have started to explore the nest. Nutmeg even starts to stretch her wings. Time is three days younger, but he mimics his sister and stretches too, even though he hasn't quite found his feet yet. Nutmeg and Time are now more active and need lots of food. Luckily, first time dad Finn is providing more than enough for both of them. But it's no easy task when Tawny Owl's Bomber and Luna are constantly chasing Finn down. Over the next few days, Nutmeg's heart shaped facial disc develops. This ginger fringing indicates that she's a female. There's just three days in between these chicks, but what a difference in size. Time is still growing well though, standing and stretching. Sister Nutmeg is ensuring he's eating enough food, which is behavior I've rarely seen before. She even passes him a mouse. Now the chicks no longer need constant attention. Finn starts prospecting for new nest sites. I'm wondering if they're thinking about trying for a second brood. I notice him at ash stump first. And then I see him at beach. It's a tight squeeze, but they soon look settled there. Gilfie even starts nest scraping. But they don't forget their responsibilities. Still providing food for nutmeg and thyme. When she's seven weeks old, Nutmeg decides to see what lies beyond the nest. She tries to make it up to the entrance. But fails and tumbles back. Today is not the day and she returns to her brother's side. Towards the end of July, the chicks are looking restless. Nutmeg finally makes it to the entrance for the first time. She sees the outside world at last. Time looks on in envy. That night, after some rest, Time feeds well. And the next day, after what looks like some gentle encouragement from Nutmeg, he tries to jump up to the entrance too, but he doesn't quite make it. Just as the chicks settle down for a well-earned rest, a 
a wood pigeon lands on the entrance and enters the nest, jumping over to the ledge. It's amazing to now see Time protecting his older sister after a month of her looking after him. His fierce posturing and calls is enough to see the pigeon off. Time seems pleased with his work. Over the next few days, both chicks spend a lot of time trying to fly around the nest. Onto the ledge and over to the entrance. They're really flapping their wings and growing in confidence all the time. At eight and a half weeks, Nutmeg is looking like a fully grown owl. So it's the perfect time to fit the chicks with ID rings. So today's ringing day for the young barn owls, Nutmeg and Time. So I'm going to get them uh, down and we're going to put the identification rings on them. I've already checked the parents, Gilfie and Finn, are not in the nest. Nutmeg's quite well feathered, so uh, I'm going to see if I can get her first. There we go, that's nutmeg. Here's chick number two. Right, so I've got them both safely in this bag and we'll get the uh, rings on as quick as we can. All right then, let's see what we've got here. So we've got Jean uh, Thorpe here to help me uh, do the ringing. We have nutmeg and thyme. Let's do uh, nutmeg first. She's well feathered, look at that. So we've got a female here. Oh look, Jean, she's a beauty. So we put these rings on each time and uh, these are BTO rings, aren't they, Jean? Yeah. Right, we're going to do a weigh-in. Might as well. Let's pop her in. 385? Yeah. So that's good weight, isn't it? It is. I always take this opportunity to check to see if they're male or female. There's sparkles. Colour. So we can tell she's a female. We've got these lovely uh, sparkles along the side. Looks like someone's done them with a little bit of pen. And uh, under her wing here as well. And then she's got this lovely uh, ginger fringing around her facial disc. Right, on to the next one. Unbelievably, it's only three days younger. But look at the difference of this. <laughs> look at a little fluffy youth. Yeah. So, sex-wise, it's going to be tricky at this age, isn't it? You see uh, how little colours there in these uh, feathers here. We've got coloured frill either, has it? No, nah, could be a boy. Yeah, I think it's a boy. Jean has years of ringing experience, so she can quickly apply the rings, causing as little stress as possible. It's best to ring them at this stage, and the ring will fit their leg for the rest of their life. Brilliant. Right, let's bag it up. Yes, this one's 400, so the younger chick's actually heavier. And I, th I thought that when I was bringing them Did out you? of the nest. Yeah, I thought, this is, this is a heavy little one. So this one's three days younger, so they're, they're about eight weeks old, these chicks now. Uh, and this one's actually three days younger, but uh, weighs 15 grams more. Yeah, it's a little chubby. So, uh, so this is a male, the other one's a female. So females in general are heavier. Uh, but it's not always the case. That's a little beauty, isn't it, that one? <laughs> yeah, so ringing the birds, we can then track them if we see this owl again. They've all got individual numbers on them, so we can hopefully see this owl flying around here and find this unique ring number. And that's the best bit about it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Magic, though. Right, we'll get them back in the nest. So that's got two more owl chicks rung. Gonna get them back up here and into the nest and see how they settle down. So the whole process took less than 10 minutes, and you can see the chicks are relatively unfazed. Once the chicks have safely returned to their nest, 
I check the cameras and it's not long before they're preening and exploring the nest again. Later that evening, Nutmeg finally jumps to the entrance and takes her very first flight. Later that night, she returns to the nest, landing on the roof before hopping inside. Barn owl fledglings often return to the nest for shelter and to get food from their parents, which is a good idea, especially when there's aggressive tawny owls around. For the next few days, Nutmeg is still hanging around the nest. You can see the chicks still have a really close bond. As Nutmeg sits in the entrance one night, Time finally manages to join her and also takes his first peek at the outside world. It's lovely to see them together, but he's not ready to go yet. So he's spending a lot of time on his own in Elmstone. Delighted to see Nutmeg on the feeding post for the very first time. And she's even eating by herself, which is great news. But Finn is still making over 20 food deliveries during the night. So Nutmeg often returns for an easy meal. Time has almost lost all of his fluffy down. He's spending a lot of time at the entrance now, head bobbing and taking in all of his surroundings. But then a tawny swoops past, knocking time backwards. After that, he decides to leave fledging for another night. Life outside the nest can be hard. Nutmeg has already had a run-in with a tawny owl and a stoat. But she's still loving life in the wild and is keen to entice time out too. Calling for him to join her outside the nest. He tries, but he's not quite ready yet. Two days later, 68 days after hatching, Time takes his first flight. I still see Nutmeg regularly around the area, turning up on the feeding post. But after his fledge, I haven't seen Time again. I wonder what's happened to him. A few days later, I find a clump of barn owl feathers from a young male owl. And I see a fox hanging around. I don't have any proof, but I do wonder if time's been taken by it. I guess I'll never know. Nutmeg and Time were in good hands from the second they hatched. Gilfie is an experienced mother. First time dad, Finn, really gave his all, providing more than enough food to allow these owlets to grow into strong fledglings. It's wonderful I'm able to watch Nutmeg most nights, as she grows from a newly fledged youngster to a confident barn owl. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.